Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Plastic Soul, the Entertainment Earth Pop Culture Show. I'm your host, Jason Lindsay. We've talked about Doctor Who quite a bit on this show, haven't we? I mean, it's no secret I'm a huge fan of the show, especially the Tom Baker stuff from the 70s. Something big is happening with Doctor Who and Disney Plus, more to come, but um, it's pretty remarkable to think that after all these years, this show, this little show that I thought was so great and it had one of the best concepts, if not the best concept in the history of television, but sadly always had a budget of about $1.35, suddenly got a huge budget when it came back in the BBC in the mid uh, 2000s, and now each episode of whatever they're doing for Disney Plus is going to be the same as about an entire season for what the BBC did. Remarkable. This is my Tom Baker action figure by Dennis Fisher in the UK. They were a sister, brother, whatever you want to call it, company of Mego, which was big in the US for all kinds of properties. Um, these are interesting. This line of figures is very interesting uh, of their type, a Mego type figure, because the figures are 10 inches tall. They're not eight inches, so they never really went in and fit with the rest of the Mego world that was so big in the 70s and early 80s. So that's kind of fascinating. They made Tom Baker's Doctor, Fourth Doctor. They made Leela, they made a Dalek, they made K-9. They made a giant robot, which is amazing. And they made a TARDIS that was like a little, had a little disappearing thing in it like the transporter did uh, in the Enterprise. Uh, and they made a Cyberman and he had a nose. But enough about them. So when it came time for Biff Bang Pow to start looking at the license of Doctor Who and what we could possibly do with it way back, well, character options already had the master toy license, kind of. But there was a category that was open, which was 8-inch figures. And I thought, well, no one's ever done that. I've got an idea. And when we do it, we can have the line sort of emulate what Dennis Fisher did in the mid-70s. I wanted Sarah Jane Smith in there. And Sarah Jane was going to have, like, the camo trousers and the, the sweater that she had and the boots that was in um, Revenge of the Cybermen, I think, is the story. Um, and that's what we wanted to do. So it was going to be Tom Baker's Doctor, K-9, a Dalek, the TARDIS, a Cyberman, Sarah Jane Smith, and then we threw in a Santaran and the Master. Um, the reason the Santaran was such a great idea was because... Suntarans are like this, just like the Spock hand, right? So this is, this is how they have their hands. Is that finger loaded? Except for one story, which was the Suntaran experiment when they had five fingers, which worked out perfectly for the Mego figures because we didn't have to sculpt new hands. Um, we couldn't do Sarah Jane. For some reason, BBC said no. So perfect, we did Leela, which goes right in line with what the original line was. And I wanted them to look like You'd walk into a store in 1977 or 78, and these were the figures you'd see on the shelf. And I think we pulled it off. I'm really proud of the TARDIS playset, which is cardboard and glossy, and it opens up, and there's the console, and came with a little keychain that made noise. We did pretty good with this stuff. I'm very pleased. But on that note, look at this beautiful set here. Character Options still has the license. Um, not long after they launched with the current show, which was Christopher Eccleston and then David Tennant, they started dipping into the classic creatures and doctors and so on and so forth, and first did sort of a Tom Baker line when that launched. Um, this is a, a reissue of Tom Baker and the Giant Robot. The Giant Robot initially, when it came out, was a Build-A-Figure, basically. But now it's all together, it's a repaint, etc. But it got me thinking. The logo's changed so many times throughout the years, it's crazy. This little coaster set, that I'm extremely proud of that we did with the BBC. And what it is, is a coaster set of all the logos used throughout the lifetime of the show. They were very much against it because they wanted to have a unifying logo for the new show to be for the old show, etc. And that's kind of what we were stuck with. And it's a beautiful logo, don't get me wrong. And it's recognizable. And I'm very proud to say we pulled it off. And you've got a coaster set out there that has the logos from 1963 on up to the 50th anniversary, basically. But I noticed with this new big deal, this Disney Plus crazy Doctor Who thing, whatever they're going to do, maybe we're going to get a miniseries with Paul McGann. That's the rumor right now. Really? When? They're using the 70s logo. They're using the 1974-75-ish logo that was basically John Pertwee's last season and Tom Baker's first and several throughout. And I thought, isn't that interesting? That seems to be the new logo 
is the 70s logo because it really is the best known of all the Doctor Who logos. And I think that's where the most of the affection comes from. Just something to think about. Is it me? Did we do it? Is it my, am I responsible for that? Did, did they look at this coaster set and go, let's use that one? Probably. No, impossible. But I can't prove it. I don't know for sure. Anyway, let me know what you think about Doctor Who, anything Doctor Who, the new Disney Plus deal that's happening, any of the toys, do you have the stuff from the 70s? Do you have all the character option stuff? What kind of stuff would you like to see? God knows they've made a ton of it, and it's pretty fun. Um, let us know in the comments. Please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to sign up for the Entertainment Earth email newsletter to stay up to date on all of your pop culture needs. Time to rip this open and have a time war, heading off into time and space. We'll see you soon.